Hi, this is Peter Buswell with another uh, Dr. Boyp Tech Tip. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Shortel route points. These are a really exciting option, typically used for third-party integrations. Uh, for example, uh, if you were to install the Shortel Enterprise Contact Center, you would connect with the Contact Center through Tappy Tappy Wave, and you would set up route points. But I want to focus for a moment on some of the more interesting characteristics of route points and otherwise, other ways that you might use them. They do have some interesting characteristics, and let's take a quick look. You go into the shortware director, you go here under call control, and you're going to find this little puppy here called route points. Now, route points look an awful lot like hunt groups and work groups, but they do have some different characteristics. I've already uh, set up and, and uh, was playing with one, so I'm just going to walk you through this setup. Um, We've set up a route point called Gandalf and gave it an extension of 157. Uh, you can assign a DID to this route point so that someone can directly dial the route point from outside. Typically, again, in an enterprise contact center, you would use this if you wanted to route a call directly into the call center. Uh, likewise, uh, you can apply a DNS map set your languages. Make sure that you select a user group that has the privileges that um, you want to enable for this route point. Additionally, you have to select a route point server. There's a, a lot of discussion about this documentation for the ECC suggests that you should put it on the contact center. It's been my experience that it's probably better to keep it on the headquarters server. This way if the contact center went down, the headquarters server would still be able to process the route point and respond to the no answer or busy conditions that otherwise would fail if the uh, route point were on a server that crashed. So you can give a route point a mailbox, which opens up some very exciting possibilities. Um, we don't want it to accept broadcast messages. Um, you can include it in the system, or it seems to suggest that here. It's been my experience that it doesn't matter what you do with this checkbox, it won't show up in the system directory. Um, you can set the uh, call stack. The call stack you know, for a route point is typically between 1 and 200. Um, and at that point, you're basically configured your route point. What I'd like to show you here are two aspects of a route point, um, either set up to be a voice mailbox, which is very interesting, or to forward a call off premise. And we'll take a look at the characteristics of uh, both those configurations. What I've done here is to set the ring answer number of uh, rings for ring no answer, which in this case would forward the route point to a voice mailbox. Now, having said that, uh, I have come to learn that though you can um, hit the voicemail button on a short tell voicemail, excuse me, hit the voicemail button on a short tell phone, uh, hit the pound key so the system prompts you for an extension number, you can go ahead and put in the extension number of your route point, and you will be prompted to do things like set up your uh, voice mailbox, uh, give it a password, uh, record a username, and uh, user greeting. But it's been my experience that it won't really take root unless you record the name via the record button here. So you'll go into system, pr uh, system preferences here, and you'll go ahead and say, uh, I want to use this phone to make my recording. And then while you're in the route point, um, and you hit the record button, the phone will ring. You'll go ahead and record your name for this, route, uh, for this route point. In this case, I recorded Gandalf. And you'll save it. And then you can hit the record uh, and actually make a mailbox greeting. So uh, to demonstrate that, I've, uh, I've set the ring no answer to 2. So imagine that someone's calling from the outside and they dial extension 157 either because it came in through a DID or through the auto attendant. 
um, it'll ring twice because that's my ring no answer default and then we're going to hear the greeting of this mailbox so basically what we have done is to create a, a viable mailbox for uh, a user named Gandalf uh, that can be directly dialed uh, either via DID, DNS, or through the auto attendant or transferred by somebody to extension 157. We've basically created a voice mailbox um, and it does not uh, require a user and if it doesn't require a user, it doesn't have an extension or a mailbox license. So that's an interesting characteristic of a route point. The second um, aspect of a route point is uh, many of us have learned to create extension lists. And the purpose of an extension list is I can put my extension list in my auto attendant such that I can control the extensions that someone can dial and what they can uh, hear in the spell by name directory, for example, or what extensions they can dial. So uh, I typically create extension lists and assign them to my auto attendant. What I've come to learn is that even though this route point is not um, in the extension list, um, what we are able to do is call in from the outside and go ahead and dial the route point anyway. So the extension list doesn't appear to have any impact on this uh, route point. So again, route point, uh, recorded name, greeting, and we've got a So, uh, 9 plus 1, Dr. Voip, uh, 1 translates into this phone number here. And what will happen at this point is that we've now set this extension to always transfer to this phone number. And what's interesting about this is that I give up my voicemail um, when I do this because the call will always be externally transferred. It's not find me, follow me. It's none of that good stuff. It is just absolutely um, how a call can come into the Shortel and be deflected outside the system. Now, <clears throat> why that's interesting uh, is that if you go to reports and you go ahead and run a user activity. Let's, let's go with the summary report. And uh, you put your start range in here and then add it. I've already set uh, up the route point that we created for Gandalf 157. And I'm going to, um, I just set it up here. Let's not waste a whole lot of time. So I'll, I'll just, uh, October 30th and then we'll go ahead and run this report. What's interesting about it is that the report will actually display uh, phone calls made or received by that, uh, by that route point. So you can see that um, Gantoff uh, at extension 157 um, you know, had uh, one inbound call and made one outbound call. Um, it's a uh, very interesting to note that the user activity summary report and the user activity detail report will capture information about calls to route points if the route point is going to a um, traditional TDM type circuit. It's been my experience that if you try to run a, a route, uh, a user activity detail report on uh, let's say a route point that uh, went to an IVR port, for example, uh, you would not get any information uh, produced. So at the end of the day, the takeaway is you can uh, create a route point, very, very powerful capability, and that route point can be used either to create a voice mailbox um, or it can be used to deflect a call to um, an external number and it will show up in call accounting. Um, third, 
And probably the reason that route points were really created was to enable integration and call control with third-party applications through TAPI and TAPI Wave. At the end of the day, route points are way cool, and you can do a lot of interesting things with them. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative and enjoyable. This is Peter for Dr. VoIP.